Greetings, YouTube. Patronus here. There have been a bunch of, uh, I guess you could say like boys versus girls meme reaction videos here recently done by quite a few YouTubers. And, uh, uniquely enough, there's, when they get to the point of the meme video where it talks about the boys' bathroom and, and how it's to be, to be used or how it is used, there's a little bit of confusion and questions being asked. Well, um, 18 years ago, someone uploaded, uh, was it ZS Overman here, uploaded a video called Male Restroom Etiquette. And that video, the original, is actually in 240p, but he uploaded a, a recent one here over a year ago at, at, te, at uh, 1080p, so you can watch it at a better quality. And it more or less explains the history and the quote-unquote proper usage of the male restroom. So let's watch this and perhaps we'll gain a little bit of understanding of why things the way they are. The men's room, the lavatory, the loo, a sanctuary of relief, the 21st century restroom is the culmination of the centuries of knowledge and experience of countless men. Men who have sought a safe haven for seeing a man about a horse or dropping the kids off at the pool. The sanctity and renowned efficiency of the loo have been preserved over the millennia by a heretofore unspoken social contract. An agreement on the types of behavior which are appropriate versus the types of behavior which are not. With the cross-pollination of global cultures resulting from modern technology such as the internet, it has become clear that this esteemed social contract is not universal. You guys should love it how the, the actual social contract is stained. It's, it's pretty disturbing. Actually <laughs> embraced. In the interests of decreasing situations oh dear. of lavatorial discomfort and furthering the cause of peace and harmony in the world, Zarathustra Studios presents male restroom etiquette for as long as they have existed men's restrooms have prided themselves on being far superior to women's facilities due to their faster transaction processing time the functioning of a restroom is directly dependent on the efficiency of the men using it waste no time this is vital walk in do your business, wash your hands, walk out. Never make eye contact. This could be seen as a proposition and could result in a severe beating or unwanted sexual encounter. <laughs> I, oh, this video is amazing. I love it. It's so great. Resist at all costs the temptation to let your gaze wander to any part of the body of a fellow occupant, whether their nether regions are of genuine interest to you or not. Now, this is the part of the, like, the boys versus girls video that the uh, female VTubers seem to have difficulty with. This will explain urinal selection in a rather succinct manner, and it's, it's very great. When you enter the restroom, always select the urinal that is as far away as possible from men who are using other urinals. Here are some illustrations of various urinal situations and the proper course of action for each. Situation number one, all urinals are empty. Correct action. Take the urinal on either edge. This allows others to most effectively comply with the rules that are to follow. Situation number two. One urinal is taken. Correct action. The urinal on the right is the optimum choice here. This minimizes the chance of any contact whatsoever with the other man in the bathroom. Situation number three. Two urinals are taken. Correct action, the middle urinal, which is equidistant from the other two occupants. Situation number four, three urinals are taken. Correct action, no urinal is acceptable. We've reached critical mass, ladies and gentlemen. We should not proceed any further or bad things could possibly happen. The loo has now reached critical mass. Leave and come back later or use a stall. Under no circumstances should two adjacent urinals be in use at the same time. Oh, flushing is a rather important one. I've seen this in action myself, where um, if if you if you if you make the mess, you clean it up. It's just it's just reasonable to do so. In most cases, urinal flushing is optional. Over time, the water will become a rich orange. At this point. Flushing is widely considered to be mandatory. 
As for commodes, the rule is, without qualification, always flush when you are finished. When you come upon an unflushed commode, leave it alone and use another. Ooh, this one is kind of a big deal because there is actually a meme in, in some of the meme videos. There's one where it's like the most quiet animal on earth is the person that is in the bathroom when you first walk in. This is this touches on that rather succinctly. In general, any noise in a public restroom which does not emanate from the plumbing is considered extremely undesirable. While grunting is highly inappropriate, some allowance is made for the occasional cough or clearing of the throat. Though astute adherence to male restroom etiquette avoid even these seemingly harmless utterances due to their ability to be interpreted as purposeful communication. Speech is your enemy. Never, ever, under any circumstance, say a single word while within a bathroom. Not to a friend, not to a lover, not to Jesus himself. Violation of this precept grates against all good things and the way of nature, corrodes the efficiency of the bathroom, and places the very fabric of our civilization in peril. Yeah, so this is why guys don't talk in the bathroom. Uh, it's, it's, in case you could say it's important. Take this example. Ralph walks into the bathroom and unzips himself. While he is relieving himself, his best friend Charles walks in. They strike up a conversation about Linux. They're breaking two rules. They're using urinals directly next to each other, and they're speaking. Mm -mm. And before long, lose so all track of time. So there they are, standing at the urinals, discussing the advantages of open source development. Sammy walks in and desperately needs to drain the lizard. But he finds himself understandably unnerved by the two sociopaths in front of the urinals, who are wantonly violating the sanctity of the loo and laughing it up. Sammy does the honorable thing. He silently moves toward the stall furthest away from the impromptu chat room. And now it's at this point in time, when, when the rules of the bathroom have been violated, that things start to break down. And it gets a little bit crazy. So strap in, boys and girls, because it's going to get a little bit crazy. Only to discover that someone has missed the toilet with their monster loaf. And now Sammy is standing knee-deep in butt pudding. Oh my god. Sammy does the only thing he can do. He vomits all over the place. Well... Can we can we have a bit of like an F and can we like a like a have to pay respect for this for Sammy here? It's 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 a very sad state of affairs. At the same time, losing control of his bladder and unleashing a torrent of kidney juice in his pants. Oh my god! Ralph and Charlie instinctively whirl around to see what all the fuss is about. It turns out that our prattling peers have not finished their own business. Thus, hosing down each other, the floor, and even the soap dispenser with this morning's Mountain Dew. Outraged, they make their way over to confront the noisemaker who they feel is responsible for their mess. And then they see the fullness of Sammy's sad situation. And they do what comes naturally to any men in this gruesome scenario. Ralph and Chuck begin to <laughs> Ralph and Chuck. In 1954, Brooklyn-born psychologist Abraham Maslow published his Motivation and Personality in which he outlined the now famous hierarchy of needs. This hierarchy is often depicted as a pyramid with the most basic of human needs on the bottom and the more advanced intellectual needs at the top. The basic premise is that human beings in general feel compelled to first see that their basic physical needs are met before their minds are free to dwell on higher worries. Ralph and Chuck, for example, were for the most part preoccupied with issues of achievement and respect, while Sammy had been engaged in the pursuit of a spouse in hopes of building a family. In this precise moment, however, all three of these gentlemen find themselves in a crisis of the hierarchy, wherein a lower order need they had all moved beyond, namely hygiene, has suddenly come up very, very wanting and it is now the pursuit of basic physiological homeostasis that drives these three unfortunate mammals. Sammy, Ralph, and Chuck all simultaneously make a mad dash for the sinks. And that's when things really begin to...
And this is why we need to follow the rules of the restroom, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Who degenerate. Ralph, having managed to kill his two combatants, begins to clean himself up. A security guard has heard the commotion and decides to take a look. The young man is shy on experience in his field, but instinctively, he knows he's going to need backup. To make a long story short, the police are called in, and a SWAT sharpshooter brings the situation some violent closure. A biohazard team is called in to clean things up. The lavatory is closed down, and all the men are forced to either soil themselves or go to another building. Two guys meet, and they start a conversation. Repeat. This eventually leads to the destruction of organized society as we know it. As such, this rule may bear repeating. Never, ever, under any circumstance, say a single word within a men's room. Yes, restrooms and humankind have come a long way since the days of squatting over a freshly dug cat hole in the noonday sun. All men of the world can find common ground in these simple rules of evacuation etiquette, and the world will be one step closer to peace and harmony, knowing that one day we will collectively wipe poor hygiene habits from the face of planet Earth. And that there, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, is male restroom etiquette. One, it's quite hilarious. It explains the, uh, the quote-unquote proper usage of the male restroom rather succinctly. And it provides with uh, rather unique and, uh, you can say, over-the-top scenarios as to what would happen if the breakdown of the rules were to occur. And, well, that's going to be it for the video. Thank you for watching. I hope this explains, you know, some, you know, uh, a better understanding for those out there who have questions about the male restroom. And with that out of the way, thank you for watching. I love your faces and I'll see you next video.